All right, we're following this breaking news out of Arizona, where the state Supreme Court just made a monumental abortion decision, uh, prospectively enforcing a 159-year-old mandate that is far stricter than the current law that's in place, outright banning abortion at any point by penalty of prison. An abortion rights supporter just summed up what she sees as the impact moments ago. Today's ruling upholds an extreme, unaccept uh, unacceptable ban that harms pregnant patients experiencing medical complications, that punishes survivors of rape, incest, and human trafficking, and that robs every single Arizonan of one of our most fundamental rights, the right to make our own decisions about our health, our bodies, and our lives. All right, NBC's Michelle Sindor is reporting on this, and MSNBC legal analyst, uh, legal correspondent, I should say, Lisa Rubin is here with me um, on set. Yamish, if you will, walk us through this ruling, what it means. Uh, good afternoon. The Arizona State Supreme Court just announced that a state ban on nearly all abortions that dates all the way back to 1864 will be the law of the land in that state. And that 1864 law bans anyone from providing abortion services except to save the life of a mother. People found in violation of that law could face a mandatory two to five years in prison if convicted. Now, the ruling indicated that enforcement of the law is stayed for 14 days. So current law in Arizona allows abortions up to 15 weeks except if except if it's immediately necessary to avert the death of the mother. Now, that law also, we should note, does not contain at this point exceptions for rape or incest, and that's what's happening right now. Now, one immediate impact of this ruling, which really is sending waves across the country, is that it could really increase the popularity of a potential ballot measure in the works for this year. Advocates uh, in Arizona have said that they've already gotten more than 500,000 signatures, wow. well above the threshold needed to get it on the ballot, um, and that would be enshrining abortion rights, they say, into the state constitution. But really, this is a big, big decision, Yasmin, and it really just shows that there's going to be a lot on November on the line when you think about Arizona and that swing state. We heard from Florida Lisa last week, mm -hmm. right, which is now essentially going to go to six-week abortion ban in just a couple of days or so because the initiative put in place by Florida Governor there, Ron DeSantis, after the decision of the Florida Supreme Court. Now we're hearing this um, in Arizona, right? Is this what you expected to come out of this decision? And what are we talking when it comes to liability for women and healthcare workers? First of all, it wasn't what I expected because this case is really an interesting one. It's about the intersection of two statutes enacted in dramatically different periods of time. One, when Arizona was still a territory banning abortion outright, and then a 15-week ban that Arizona put in place much later, but one that this court and the majority of this court says was predicated on Roe being in existence at the time. And essentially what the court finds is that to harmonize those two statutes, the result is that all abortions, and I'm reading from the opinion, except those necessary to save a woman's life are illegal and additional criminal and regulatory sanctions may apply to abortions performed after 15 weeks. That basically is saying to a physician or any other healthcare practitioner involved in the provision of an abortion in Arizona, even if necessary to save a woman's life after 15 weeks, you can have criminal and regulatory sanctions applied to you. This is nothing less than chilling. I think even more chilling than what the Florida Supreme Court did last week. Y Yamisha, I want to talk about the ballot initiative. Um, because every time we have seen abortion on the ballot in seven states so far, um, voters have showed up and voted in favor of abortion rights. And we're looking ahead to November and how that's going to be decided uh, in Florida as well. Do we know at all where Arizonans, where voters stand when it comes to abortion rights in their state, if in fact they're able to get this ballot initiative in time and in place for November? It's a key question, and it is important to note that in at least seven states where we've seen abortion ballot initiatives um, make it all the way to the ballot each time the, the side that was in favor of abortion access has won. In Arizona, you would imagine that they might be like the rest of the country, which is that the majority of Americans say in poll after poll that they want to see some form of abortion access. So it will be very interesting to see whether or not the state of Arizona is in that same way. The advocates there, the ones that are in, in favor of abortion access, they say 
that that is the case, that the majority of Arizonans want to see abortion, some form of abortion rights there. I also want to go back, if we could, to the idea of what it's going to mean for people on the ground there, because yeah. the governor of Arizona has said that she, and I think she's about to talk, but the governor of Arizona is saying that she doesn't want this to be enforced. But now that the state Supreme Court has made this decision, it's going to be really interesting to see whether there are going to be legal challenges to enforcing this law and putting people, frankly, in jail if they're in violation. Well, and, and Yamish, you bring, about the, you bring up the implications of this decision, but also the implications of, of the health care system, right, and doctors that f are afraid of being held liable and making the wrong decision, which we've often seen in other states across this country. That's right. You have Democratic Governor Katie Hobbs, who issued an executive order last year granting State Attorney General Chris Mays, a, a fellow Democrat, the power to stop any attempt by a county prosecution of alleged violation of abortion laws. Now, the Attorney General said before her election in 2022 that she would refuse to prosecute anyone for having an abortion. But again, her refusal following a state Supreme Court ruling that affirms this ban now, it really prompts its own legal challenge. So we'll really have to see whether or not the governor and the Attorney General there are going to have to enforce a law that they say they morally um, disagree with. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens. And of course, you're going to have women now that are going to be trying to go to other states. And, and it's going to be yeah. very hard because, of course, it's the West Coast. There's California and other states. But it's just going to be like in Florida, where you're going to have people driving hours and hours and hours trying to find resources at a moment where they're already feeling in some ways trauma. So you have advocates for abortion rights who are saying that this is really just going to be putting women's lives in danger and making it even harder for women to have um, healthy lives and, and to have healthy pregnancies. And by the way, the likelihood of this taking effect, it seems as if um, we're looking at a 14-day runway, which is not a lot of time. No, and even if in November this ballot initiative is to succeed, think about the window of time between the expiration of that 14 days and when the ballot initiative, if it were passed, were to take place. Think about all the health care clinics and health care providers that will decline to provide abortion in that period of time, even if Chris Mays does have the power, as Kitty Hobbs has told her she does, to enjoin enforcement of this decision by local prosecutors. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone, you hit search on the bottom right corner, you type in MSNBC, you click on the MSNBC app, you click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.